Something very weird is going on. Arsenal, they're currently top of the league. They're definitely going to be in the European Cup next year. Arsenal seems to be the place where young players go to thrive. Bakayo Saka, Gabriel Martinelli, Martin Odegaard, William Saliba. It doesn't matter who you think of. Young players do very well at that club. The best clubs want the best players. And Arsenal, in my opinion, are going to be the Premier League champions. And yet, they do not seem to be in for Jude Bellingham. It's a mystery. So we know that this summer, the transfer window is going to revolve around the future of Jude Bellingham. But where is he going to end up? Lots of people have lots of theories about this, but nobody really is saying Arsenal. And the question I would like to ask is, why not? Before you even try it, do not say money. Money is too simple. Kronke has money. Kronke is incredibly rich and therefore Arsenal are incredibly rich. Combine that with the fact that they are going to be in the Champions League next season. That is non-negotiable. That isn't a debate anymore. So the fact that they're going to be in the European Cup means that they have guaranteed money. So we know that Bellingham will crush the previous transfer record that was spent by Arsenal. Arsenal's transfer record is comically the 72 million quid that they spent on Nicola Pepe. But crucially, that wasn't spent by Arteta. Arteta came in a few months after that mistake was made. And if you look at the money spent by Arteta, it is tiny. I think Ben White is his biggest signing. 50 million quid. How much did they spend on Gabriel Jesus? How much did they spend on Zinchenko? Probably not even as much as Nicola Pepe cost. So... Maybe it's time to spend a bit of money. It really makes no sense to me why Arsenal aren't in the conversation for Bellingham. If I were an Arsenal fan, I would be pulling my hair out. Maybe what we should do is analyse where he is most likely to go to and maybe by process of elimination, we can see if there is a route that he would end up at Arsenal. So on the most recent episode of the club podcast, I do hope that you listened, uh, we asked one another where we think Bellingham will end up. And my shout was actually Borussia Dortmund. Where will Bellingham be playing at the start of next season? My answer, Borussia Dortmund. So I think that he could stay there. That is a potential outcome of all of this. But the Premier League, with all of its flashing lights and its disgusting money sloshing about everywhere, surely Jude Bellingham, a prodigious English talent, will end up playing his trade in the Premier League. And if he does, where will it be? Liverpool have been a front runner for such a long time, haven't they? They have had a long-standing interest and... Jude Bellingham could be the jewel in the crown. As Jurgen Klopp builds again, he could be the starlet to take Liverpool back to the top. I think that would be appealing for him. I think he would be so suited to Jurgen Klopp. I think he would be so suited to Liverpool. And if you want the best for Bellingham, if I was his mate, if I was Job, if I was his father, I would be suggesting Liverpool. Simply because everything that Bellingham is so good at, he is sensational. I think it would be accentuated and nurtured and cultivated perfectly under Klopp at Liverpool. He is the perfect box-to-box midfielder. And I think playing for Klopp would allow him to flourish in that role. Look, Manchester City, we may as well talk about them. Obviously, the allure of playing for Guardiola, linking up with one of the most dazzling crop of footballers ever assembled is going to be appealing. The genuine guarantee of silverware. No club like it. The guarantee of silverware at City. Of course, that's going to be appealing. And let's be totally frank, you get double rich if you play for Man City. So that could also be appealing. But I do feel like the Guardiola system and the way that Guardiola likes to play football and what he demands from his players could nullify and dilute the spontaneity, you know, the brilliance, the unpredictability, the flammable qualities of Bellingham. So if I were Bellingham, I think while City is appealing, there would be something that would really catch my eye about Liverpool. Real Madrid, obviously. The glamour, the glory, the white shirt, the Bernabeu, the history, Di Stefano, Cristiano Ronaldo, need I say more? And I think that Real Madrid could be a very interesting angle. I could actually see this one happening, you know, for Bellingham. I really could. And I think any of the massive clubs from the Iberian Peninsula, when they start pursuing you it's very difficult to turn them down Real Madrid if they really want you they have a propensity to get you so it'll be interesting to see how that one goes obviously Manchester United are in the conversation even Chelsea considering the season that we're having we are in the conversation and yet Arsenal nowhere to be seen 
the biggest clubs are going to go head to head for Jude Bellingham and everybody's getting really excited. If you are a Man City fan, you're going, oh my God, this is amazing. We're going to reunite Jude Bellingham with Erling Haaland as a Chelsea fan. I'm dreaming. I'm thinking Enzo Fernandez has looked very good. Maybe the jewel in the crown of the half a billion quid spent of late. Linking him up could be uh, could be brilliant with Jude Bellingham. Bellingham and Fernandez as a midfield duo could be sensational for the next decade. I'm sure Manchester United fans are concocting their own fantasies and Liverpool fans are definitely telling us that Jude Bellingham will kickstart them to charge up the table again. So everybody is getting really excited creating these little fantasies in their head and it's really, really enthralling. If you are, however, of an Arsenal persuasion, this has got to be so frustrating for you because you're just not linked. It's just not there. And... I am probably too long in the tooth to believe that this can't happen. Sometimes those quietest are the most decisive. And there is a world where all of a sudden Jude Bellingham signed for Arsenal. That, that could happen. And I can see a world where that could happen. Because I think when you think about what he would bring to that Arsenal team, it is exactly what they need. Look, on paper at least, Bellingham is the solution to so many Arsenal problems. If you're an Arsenal fan, he's exactly what you need. You know, Thomas Partey is, what, 29. Granit Xhaka is 30. Jorginho's come in and he isn't young. And there needs to be a recycling of central midfielders because the drop-off to the next bracket at Arsenal isn't quite good enough. Also, when you look at the personnel in that Arsenal midfield, you can see that a revamp is necessary. It cannot continue as it is. And they are going to need to spend some money on some young talent at some point. So why aren't they going for the very best? They're top of the league. They're the youngest team in the league. You can see a world in which he would flourish under Arteta and it does make sense. Combine that with the fact, look, I'm going to get some stick here, I know. I concede that Granit Xhaka is having a very good season. I concede that he is doing a remarkable job and is actually one of the unsung heroes in this Arsenal team. When people talk about the top five Arsenal players of this season, Granit Xhaka is, in my opinion, cruelly left out. He doesn't get the plaudits that he deserves. But it's also important, isn't it, to remember the player that Granit Xhaka was, say, before this season. We have to take into account the context of Granit Xhaka's Arsenal career. And remember, it wasn't that long ago that he was telling the Arsenal fans where to go. He was launching the captain's armband and think about what that captain's armband represents. That is the spirit of Tony Adams and Sol Campbell. You cannot just launch that. It's so much history steeped in that band. So, yes, he's having a very good season. But I think even the most ardent Granit Xhaka supporter would concede that he could be improved upon. Something that we may want to remember here is Mikhailo Mudrik. Arsenal are effectively a bit richer at the moment than they anticipated being. They didn't have to spend the amount of money on Trossard that they thought they were going to have to spend on Mudrik. And therefore, they will fill quids in. They'll feel fairly flush at the moment. I wonder if that could have an impact on their pursuit of Jude Bellingham. So, I've thought about this long and hard, and I'm trying to deduce a reason as to why Arsenal aren't even in the hunt for Jude Bellingham. The only thing I can think of is Declan Rice. Is that what it is? Look, in the crazy world of transfers, I honestly wouldn't be surprised to see Jude Bellingham playing for Arsenal at the start of next season. That could easily happen, and I can see a world where that happens, especially if Arsenal do win the Premier League but you're not going to sign Rice and Bellingham so I wonder if the lack of noise around signing Jude Bellingham could be linked to the potential of signing Declan Rice and I guess if they go for Rice who is a very talented player not as good as Bellingham but he is a very good player who can grow and will fit in snugly to that Arsenal team easily if they were to sign Rice they could potentially sign two players Somebody to help Saka out. Maybe if Kieran Tierney leaves, you get two players for the price of one effectively because Rice will cost a lot less than Bellingham and Arsenal could therefore sign Rice plus one instead of just Bellingham. Maybe that will be it. But I just wonder if we are going to see a late surge from Arsenal to try and prize Jude Bellingham away from Borussia Dortmund. In the crazy world of transfers, Anything really can happen. Very interested to hear your thoughts on this, particularly if you're an Arsenal fan. If you're an Arsenal fan, are you slightly frustrated that you're not linked with Bellingham? Do you think that you should be in the market for a player of Bellingham's quality? Is that the statement signing that Arsenal need? Reimagine that midfield. 
going into the new season as champions with Bellingham starting a European campaign. I mean, that, heaven forbid, desperately hope this doesn't happen. But I thought the lack of, the lack of information out there about Bellingham and Arsenal was worthy of conversation. So I am very interested to hear your thoughts. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. If you're new around here, I would love for you to click subscribe. Welcome to the community. And if you've enjoyed this video, please, please, please give it a like. See you in a bit. Have a wonderful, wonderful Friday.